Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday, brought to you by the YouTube channel Telecom Dog Travel, Tech and Talk. I'm happy to announce a major project. It's a video series based on a Windows 10 slash Linux Mint installation in a dual boot environment. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe. That's the way you thank us for all the hard work of making these videos. On with the show. The following is what it might look like if you start a dual boot system. There you have it, the bio screen followed by a dual boot screen that's a Linux on top and a Windows 10 on the bottom. Making our way along. And it looks like we're at the Windows desktop. Uh, we might be locked there, so let's see if we can unlock that. Desktop, Windows 10, uh, lots of folders, because I like folders, with folders inside of folders, uh, sorted um, files. As we move forward, I'm going to have to consider moving all my old data, pictures, files from the machine as is, saving it somewhere, erasing everything on a computer, and then when I get the new computer up and running, putting that data, those files, those folders, on that new computer. So I need a system for doing that. So a backup slash restore is one alternative, and the other is a straight copy command. When you do the copy command, you're looking at um, copying from somewhere and copying to somewhere. What's the difference between a backup slash restore system and a copy system? I do have enough files slash programs to rebuild my system in the form of a backup slash recovery if I need to. And I do have enough uh, files slash programs to rebuild my system in a copy from, copy to method if needed. What I'm going to do this time is actually a combination of both of them. A little of the both the best, best worlds. A little bit about the differences. When you copy, you need to know where the file is that you're going to copy. When you copy, you need to know if that file actually exists. How can you copy a file if you didn't know about the file? You didn't know that file name. You didn't even know it existed. And it's possible to not know that a file exists because that file might be hidden or in an invisible form. If you're going to copy a file, you need to have the proper administrative privileges, permissions to do that. You can't copy or erase or delete a file if you don't have the necessary permissions or permission, the necessary permissions or privileges. If your copies are error-free and you put those copies on a new computer, you might find that your new computer runs a little bit faster, more efficiently. Now, a backup. What are the benefits of a backup? A backup will require you to install some software that does backup and recover. There is an exception to that. Windows does come with its own backup and recovery system, but you might choose to use another one. So if you're not going to use the backup and recovery system that comes with Windows, you're going to have to acquire one, buy it, get it off, download it offline for free, or download it offline and pay for it, and then install it. Then you do your backup. After the backup is uh, complete, maybe you erase your machine or you get a new machine, and you restore that system to the new machine. But you will have to install the backup software first 
if you did not use the backup uh, restore software that comes with Windows. I might also note that you will have to use the proper uh, you will have to use the proper version of that backup uh, system, or you might find that you have issues. The backup restore process is actually an automated process. Once you get the backup process done, the restoration is pretty easy. You press a few buttons in the beginning, and then the rest of it is automatic. It might run for an hour or so, and when it finishes, then it's done. Whereas, with a backup, backing up your system and copying it to the new computer, you have to know where the files were so that you can put them back in the same place on the new system. One other benefit of the backup slash restore program is that it carries with it your customizations and data. Here's an example. Let's say you bought a um, photo editing program, software to edit photos because you like to take pictures and edit the photos. If you got that photo editing program and you immediately made another copy of it and you stored that copy somewhere else, in case your original got damaged, you have two copies. If you install that program on your system, on your computer, and then uh, during the process it asks you things like, what's your name? What type of photo format would you like to use? Where do you want to save your files? Do you need to link to uh, link, uh, do you need to sign on so that your files can be uploaded into the cloud for safekeeping. And then once you start taking pictures, the pictures that you take will be um, in the cloud because your program uploaded it and it will be on the computer as well. Let's say for some reason uh, maybe you got rid of that computer and now you have a new computer and you want to put that photo program back on your new computer. As I mentioned, with the copy program, you would just take your copy out and put install that program on the computer. But the problem is, you're now going to have to answer those questions again. What's your name? What type of format do you like to store your pictures in? What directory do you want to use? Are you required to sign online to get your photos to be uploaded into the cloud? So you'll have to do that all over. Not to mention, the actual pictures that you took, they're gone. If, if you lost that original computer, or if that computer broke in, or was broken, then you've lost those uh, photos. That's what I consider data. Photos, your documents, the papers that you write, all the other personal stuff that you put in the computer when you set it up. Whereas, with a backup restore process, you uh, hit the restore button, um, ask a couple of questions, one hour later, it'll say I'm finished, and everything is back on your computer. Everything sits your last backup. So that means we answer the questions about your name, uh, what format you want to use, where do you want to store your files, as well as the information where you signed in for online, uh, the actual pictures that you took, your other actual personal documents, the things that you brought to the computer. If you use a backup program, those customizations are guaranteed to be caught and stored. If you do only a copy, you will have to know where those uh, items are and have to physically go there and copy them. Uh, some of them might not be available for you to copy. They may be in a format that requires administrative privileges or they may be um, invisible. You will have to know exactly where they are if you're going to use a copy process for this. So that is why uh, the backup slash recovery process is often preferred over the backup. I use, um, I use both of them. I'm sure I've got four copies of every file around here somewhere. I've got one on the computer. I've got one on two separate hard drives. i got a hard drive with everything on it. got another hard drive with everything on it. And then I have some things that are uploaded into the cloud. So I've got four copies of every um, file that I have. So if need be, I can use the copy method or I can use the um, restore method. After I use the backup, I take that product, 
which is usually an ISO file and then I store that on my hard drive and in the uh, clouds as well. So in summary, copying is you start over with the new program just like the first day you brought it. You install it and then you have to put all your information in. Backup restore is all of your information is saved. So you can definitely see the benefits. That's another episode of Tech Tuesday. And don't forget, if you like the videos, click on the notification bell. That way you'll be notified as soon as we upload a video. We try and upload several videos a week and we'd like you to have access to them as soon as they are available. See you in the next video.